A sports legend who broke barriers on and off the gridiron returned home to Huntsville today. The Lee Athletics Fieldhouse is now named for Conrad Holloway. He was the first black man to play quarterback in the SEC when he played at the University of Tennessee. Way 31's Xavier Wary joins us live today, today and he uh, spoke to Holloway as he was honored in Huntsville. Xavier. Yeah, hey, Dan, I'm currently standing across the street of the campus of Lee High School. Earlier today, when I attended that ceremony, it was absolutely beautiful. And for Holloway, it was actually a watershed moment for him. Now, look, earlier today, administrators, faculty, the Lee High School band, student athletes, they all came out as they unveiled the new name of this sports complex. Now, look, Holloway, he's no stranger to making history. As I mentioned, or as mentioned, he was the first African-American quarterback to start and win a game in the SEC, and he did it for the Tennessee Volunteers before going on to play professionally in the Canadian Football League. Today, for the first time ever, his name becomes entrenched in Lee High School's uh, history as the entire sports complex is now named after him. For a school that has some pretty high-profile athletes walk through the doors, Holloway is happy to be recognized but believes more could follow. If we start naming them, we'll have to stop because it's going to continue. And that's what I like about it. And if you if you... Get your name mentioned now, and they're praising you. You're going to be there for a while. Now, look, the timing of this unveiling could not be more special because the NFL also made history this past weekend. For the first time, three black quarterbacks were drafted in the top five, led by former Alabama Crimson Tide quarterback Bryce Young, who went number one overall. And it's hard to imagine this historical achievement happening if it weren't for the road Holloway paved. They were good quarterbacks and they made it. Black, white, blue, whatever. They made the team and that's hard to do. I don't care what color you are. Now we will have more on this ceremony coming up on Way 31 News at 5. Reporting live in Huntsville, Xavier Wary, Way 31 News. At 4.03, breaking news coming in right now. Authorities in Illinois say several people are dead, and uh, they were all killed in this dust storm after cars crashed because of this zero visibility. Look at this. This is actual video from that dust storm in central Illinois. As many as 80 cars and trucks caught up in that pileup. Dozens of injuries have also been reported. Those injured now rush to hospitals in the area. Just checking with Way 31 uh, Chief Meteorologist Taylor Keyes. What a strong storm system, Taylor. Uh, not just impacting the upper Midwest, of course, but all the way down here to Alabama. I just got back from Florida over the weekend. There were wind advisories as that front pushed through. Yeah, a really, really big uh, system affecting really the eastern half of the United States. Uh, it's not only kicking up the wind, but it's also creating cooler than average weather across the eastern half of the country. We call this an upper level trough. That's basically a big dip in the jet stream here. You have low pressure centered here and that's really kicking up the wind and bringing in a cool start to the month of May, not only in North Alabama, but across much of the country. Here locally, the wind gusts have peaked at around 35 miles per hour this afternoon. That's still where we stand at the moment around the shoals. Meanwhile, in Huntsville, 32 mile per hour gusts at this hour. We are going to see those winds subside later this evening and throughout the night tonight. You can expect around 5 to 10 mile per hour sustained winds, but the gusts are going to return during the day tomorrow, especially tomorrow afternoon, when those gusts could get up to 40 miles per hour so maybe even a little bit stronger than what we have seen today. We don't currently have a wind advisory in place, but that will be possible tomorrow and we'll keep you updated if that is issued. After tomorrow, we are going to see calming winds Wednesday into Thursday. A lot of sunshine and some chilly nights in our future. I'll have a look at our forecast lows for tonight coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Taylor. New at 4 5, North Alabama schools will receive grant money from the Tennessee Valley Authority. Today, the TVA announced these schools will take part in a two $2.6 million grant to help save on energy bills. The grant was uh, awarded based on need and the school's ability to cut energy waste. 59 other schools across the southeast were also awarded part of that grant money. Another big shakeup in Americans, America's banking industry. President Biden is praising action by federal regulators following the seizure and sale of First Republic Bank. J.P. Morgan Chase bought First Republic. They insist it was not a bailout. In taking over First Republic, Chase agreed to protect the funds of all of the bank's depositors. ABC's Lindsay Watts has the latest now from Washington. 
Early Monday morning, the FDIC seized the banking assets of First Republic Bank, then sold them to financial giant J.P. Morgan Chase. Under the deal, First Republic customers are now J.P. Morgan customers, and people will have access to all of their money. But customers have been advised to keep using their First Republic branch rather than Chase banks until the two systems have merged. First Republic is the second largest U.S. financial institution to fail. We have to make sure that we're not back in this position again. And I think we're well on our way to be able to make that assurance. President Biden today repeating his calls for Congress to strengthen regulations and supervision of large and regional banks. Biden also insisting this is no bailout, despite the FDIC providing J.P. Morgan with $50 billion in financing. Well, let me be very clear. All depositors are being protected. Shareholders are losing their investments. And critically, taxpayers are not the ones that are on the hook. First Republic has been on the brink of collapse for weeks following the failures of Silicon Valley and signature banks in March. First Republic stock took a nosedive last week after the bank reported customers withdrew more than $100 billion. Based on our analysis of the banking industry, um, this was the last of the ones that um, should face significant challenges. Financial analysts say the most important takeaway is no depositors lost money during the seizure and sale. In a call with analysts Monday, J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon predicted the market crisis surrounding banks is over, though he believes there will be other cracks in the system caused in part by the Federal Reserve's effort to reduce inflation by raising interest rates. The Fed is meeting again this week, and market analysts do expect them to once again hike interest rates to combat inflation. Lindsay Watts, ABC News, Washington. The only larger bank failure in, failure in U.S. history is in, was Washington Mutual, which collapsed at the height of the 2008 financial crisis. And now to an urgent manhunt for a mass shooting suspect. This is the man police in Texas say is connected to the execution-style shootings. Five family members died, one of them just eight years old. Morgan Norwood has more on the suspect. The massive manhunt for Francisco Oropesa, the man who authorities say shot and killed five of his neighbors, almost execution style, now in its third day with hundreds of officers combing the streets of Cleveland, Texas. Today, law enforcement searched this recycling center after they say they got a tip about a person that matched the description of Francisco Oropesa, who was last seen in that area. Authorities have been looking for him since Friday. We do not know where he is. We don't have any tips right now to where he may be. Authorities say Oropesa was firing his AR-15 style rifle for fun in his yard on Friday night when a next door neighbor asked him to stop because a newborn was trying to sleep. Well, the suspect then follows the neighbor home, police say, barges inside and fires. Wilson Garcia was there and managed to escape. He says he came back and shot everyone in the head. He didn't want witnesses. When he saw us running and couldn't get to us, he went back to kill them. Five of the 10 people inside were killed. Diana Velasquez Alvarado, Julissa Molina Rivera, Jose Jonathan Casares, Garcia's wife, Sonia Argentina Guzman, and stepson, third grader Daniel Enrique Lazo, among those killed. No tengo palabras como... Garcia says, I don't have words to describe what happened. It's like we're alive, but not living. What happened was really horrible. Officials say all five victims are from Honduras, while the suspect, on the other hand, is a Mexican national. Now, a source familiar with the investigation tells ABC News that Oropesa was previously deported on four occasions, an $80,000 reward now being offered for information that leads to his arrest. I'm Morgan Norwood, ABC News, New York. Court records for a drunk driving conviction in 2012 match the suspect's name and birth date and suggest he may have been familiar with the area for more than a decade. Next and new on Way 31, cleaning up after violent weather, a look at powerful storms caught on video across the country. And a big change for a weight loss giant next, once ahead for Jenny Craig as the company shuts down corporate offices. Another chilly night ahead. You'll probably want a jacket when you step outside tomorrow morning. I'll let you know when we'll turn the corner to warmer weather here in the Tennessee Valley. Coming up next. Coverage you can count on. You're watching Way 31 News with Dan Schaefer, Marie Waxel, Chief Meteorologist Taylor Knust, and the Way 31 Storm Tracker Early Warning Radar Network.
A heads up now about weight loss giant Jenny Craig. ABC News learned Jenny Craig may shut down its corporate offices as soon as Friday. Melissa Adan looks into what's next for the company, whose business model has been impacted by the obesity drug business. For the last 40 years, Jenny Craig has focused on a business model centered on prepared meals, diet plans, and in-person coaching. It's Jenny Craig and it's delicious. That may soon change. The company is set to close its corporate offices as early as this week, according to letters obtained by ABC News where the company tells its employees that it is in the process of winding down physical operations, likely transitioning to an e-commerce model. Jenny Craig warning employees that its corporate office in Carlsbad, California, and its New Jersey facility may close as early as this coming Friday, and that mass layoffs may be imminent. The company has about 600 centers globally, with nearly 500 company-owned and franchise locations in the U.S. and Canada and is facing an industry now shifting away from brick and mortar shops and into online retail. ABC News has reached out to Jenny Craig for comment. They did not immediately respond. The notices to Jenny Craig employees coming as Bloomberg Law reports a bankruptcy filing could come as soon as this week for the cash strapped company if no buyer is found. Melissa Don, ABC News, Los Angeles. We're getting new video and new information after violent storms impacted parts of the country this weekend. Take a look at this tornado. Several people whipped out their phones, grabbed video of this twister as it bore down on Virginia Beach, Virginia. The National Weather Service surveyed the damage. They rated this tornado as an EF3. Damage is reported in up to 100 homes across Virginia Beach. This is drone video of some of that destruction. You can see the storm shifted some homes off their foundations. Others had their roofs torn apart. Gas leaks were also reported in the area. Thankfully, officials say there were no injuries. Cleanup efforts are still underway. That Virginia tornado rated higher on the enhanced Fujita scale than this storm that hit Florida Saturday. This tornado packed a punch of an EF2. But as you can see, it flipped a car as one person videoed the fury and destruction happening all around them. Cleanup and relief efforts now underway there. Spring and Storm Tracker Chief Meteorologist Taylor Canoes. Taylor, we're all too familiar with the power of storms like that here. Yeah, no doubt about that, Dan. Uh, thankfully, we've had a fairly quiet past few weeks, severe weather-wise in North Alabama, and the extended outlook does not look too ominous for more severe weather. I'm not ruling it out, but uh, generally speaking, the long-range model is not pointing to anything extreme as we head into the first half of May. Part of the reason for that is we have been below average with the temperatures recently. Uh, today's high has been below average, and that makes it 11 consecutive days of a below average highs across the Tennessee Valley. We are in the 60s this afternoon in Huntsville, currently at 68 degrees under a mainly clear sky. Uh, that's about 10 degrees cooler than average for May 1st. And we're going to see those temperatures tumble this evening with the clear skies in place and calming winds will fall to the 50s around 8 o'clock and eventually down to the 40s for the second straight night. 44 or forecast low. Yeah, the wind's going to be calmer, but this is uh, well below average for this time of the year. Typically, we see low in the mid 50s early in May, but no going with that over the next few nights uh, down uh, to Tuesday night, Wednesday night, more forecast lows into the low and mid 40s. It's not going to be cold enough for frost necessarily, uh, but definitely worthy of having the jacket handy over the next few nights and the early mornings moving forward. It's all associated with a system that's really causing terrible weather across the Midwest today. A lot of rain and even some snow in parts of Michigan this afternoon. Happy May to them. That's all thanks to this big dip in the jet stream that I mentioned earlier that's kicking up the wind and bringing the cool air to the eastern half of the country. That's going to stick around another, another day or two, eventually clearing out later this week. Slightly warmer air gradually moves our way forward the second half of this week. So walking through the highs in the next few days, tomorrow looking similar to today with upper 60s to near 70 for your forecast highs. Not too different on Wednesday either with more of those upper 60s to low 70s. We start to turn the corner to warmer weather on Thursday with low to mid 70s at that point. Once we wrap up the week, we are looking at highs approaching 80 degrees, which is right around average for this time of the year. As far as rain is concerned, not much to be found over the next few days. We are going to stay mainly clear tonight. 
mainly sunny on Tuesday, maybe a few afternoon clouds, but that's really about it. It may be completely sunny during the day on Wednesday. A gradual increase in cloud cover on Thursday, but still dry until Friday. That will be our next opportunity at some wet weather. Right now, it looks like a chance of showers off and on during the day Friday through Friday night. And then as we head toward the weekend, that may be our next chance at some thunderstorms. None of this looks like a complete washout, so don't cancel your outdoor weekend plans, but scatter thunderstorms possible from time to time on Saturday into Sunday. We'll watch out for the isolated threat for severe weather, but it does not appear to be a big threat for us right now in the Tennessee Valley. As I mentioned, we will also be trending warmer despite that wet weather with highs approaching 80 degrees by Saturday, and we'll probably stay pretty close to that by Sunday into next Monday as well.